Welcome to the Nutrigenomic Nation podcast with Brian Highfield, certified nutritionist, author, speaker, and founder of multiple successful companies in the health world. Brian is known for educating healthcare professionals and others on improving their health and their life through breakthroughs in nutrition, technology, and biochemistry. On the podcast, Brian interviews thought leaders in the world of nutrition and natural health. He and his guests share the secrets of a whole life natural approach to health and the life-altering results you can get by making easy changes to your diet and daily routine. All right, welcome to another episode of Nutrigenomic Nation. And so uh, we have another great guest with us to, for today's episode. We have Morgan Simon. So uh, Morgan is a holistic nutritionist and uh, she just actually just, she's out of Austin, Texas. And she's the founder of Well Timed, which specializes in personalized nutritional therapy and holistic health and wellness for individuals and families. And we're very privileged to have Morgan with us. So Morgan, thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much. I'm really excited to be here. Awesome. Well, we want to get to know you a little bit. So what can you tell our audience about, you know, what drove you into healthcare and wanting to be a nutritionist and, and being a uh, really into uh, nutrition and, and helping people out? Absolutely. I grew up loving nutrition. So from uh, an early age, I had a nutrition um, interest, but I dove into business career wise. So I kind of kept nutrition as my passion, but I pursued business. I worked in marketing and technology for a decade. And then I had my first child and I realized that this is something that I needed to do as a career. Um, my son was born full term, but he had to be born via C-section because he was breech. And so this was quite a big change from what I was envisioning, you know, a water birth at a birth center. And I knew that his gut microbiome would be impacted by the birth process. And so I really dove deep into the research at this point. Um, and I was breastfeeding him and I made some dietary tweaks once I really discovered just how deep, you know, I said I love nutrition, but there was a whole world that I hadn't delved into. So I made some, um, some tweaks within my own diet and essentially put myself on the GAPS protocol. And I was amazed at how instantaneous his change was. So he had, you know, just some gas, some fussiness, a lot of those things that we kind of think of as normal for babies. And once I changed my diet, I saw how profoundly it impacted him. Um, I also had a few different health issues that, again, I would have considered at the time very common, but they're common, they're not normal. So things like, you know, getting some sore knees after I would do a hard workout, I realized that that was actually inflammation. And when I adjusted my diet, I got relief of that. At the same time as I was going through all of this, um, I discovered the work of Weston A. Price, which I know that you've had some guests who have mentioned as mm -hmm. well, but it was really, really eye-opening to dive into what modern research was saying about childhood health, but also this ancestral approach to nutrition. So the work of Dr. Price was looking at traditional people groups around the world. And there was so many parallels with what they were finding and people spread out throughout the world. And then it all comes back to, you know, you look at what modern science is telling us. And a lot of times it's the exact same things. So these were both pointing to nutrient dense diets and the importance of nutrient density for overall health, for bone development, for fertility, you know, it really impacts everything. And I was pretty shocked and dismayed to see how the standard American diet was the opposite of that. So the yeah. way that we produce foods to children was the polar opposite. And you kind of look at how that has happened and the profound impact it's had on, you know, childhood obesity and the fact that autoimmune disease has doubled in children in the last um, 10 years. So I was seeing just this crazy amount of research and realized that I needed to go back and pursue this as a career. Um, so I went back to school, I became a functional nutritional therapy practitioner, and it really has been just incredible to do this work. I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one. I also do group classes, and I specialize in women um, as well as children. So this includes the preconception period, optimizing fertility, pregnancy, postpartum, and then introducing foods and optimizing early childhood nutrition. And then I also partner with companies who make health and wellness products. And so I kind of bring in my marketing background to approach that as well. Awesome. So what are the things that, that some of the things that you discovered that made you just think, wow, I didn't know that. And you started implementing that into your diet and also the diets of your children. 
Yeah, there's, so I can go a lot of different directions that one, but I would say that the biggest surprise was really seeing the disparity between um, what growing infants need. So babies, you know, we start feeding them at six months and they have these really specific nutrition demands and what they need is so far different than what we are actually feeding them. So, you know, we can talk about prenatal health, we can talk about the quality of breast milk, commercial formula, but really those introductory foods were I think the things that I found most surprising. So in that six to 12 month age range, um, almost all parents are doing either fruits, vegetables, rice cereal, or oatmeal. And while produce does have some incredible um, nutrients and it is very important as a part of the diet, for babies, we need to look at, for that solid food introduction, what their digestive system is really capable of. And so um, at that age, you know, at six months, their digestive system is still developing. They have really limited enzyme production, specifically for carbohydrates. So carbohydrate enzymes like, uh, like amylase, for instance, those aren't fully developed until closer to about two and a half. So they don't have the ability to digest the rice cereal, the oatmeal, the other grains that we are giving them. And the standard American diet approach to feeding children is, you know, People say you can feed them anything besides honey. And that's just not true. They don't have the digestive system to actually process these foods. And that can lead to future digestive problems, allergic reactions, immune responses. Um, there's been studies that have shown that babies who are fed high amounts of cereal, they have lower concentrations of zinc, reduced calcium absorption. So it really is impacting their overall health. And then we're missing the um, we're missing the boat on those nutrients that they actually do need. So to figure out what we should be feeding them, we need to look at what their digestive system can handle and then what they need nutritionally. So at that age, you know, this six to 12 month age where they really have these high nutrition demands, it specifically is zinc, iron, B vitamins and protein. Um, and then what their system can handle, they do make pepsin, they do have the proteolytic enzymes and they do have hydrochloric acid. So they are able to digest proteins and fats, and that's also what nutritionally their body is needing. So I found it really um, interesting just to recognize that and kind of see once again that modern research and ancestral wisdom are both showing us that these children have these high nutrient demands that we're missing the mark on. So I love working with this specific population because we are able to start early and introduce those foods and set these babies up for lifelong health. So some of my favorite foods for my children as well as for my clients um, are liver. I'm a huge organ meat fan and so I always love incorporating it. And when you can start when they're young, you know, babies aren't predisposed. They don't have mm -hmm. any idea as to what you're feeding them until you tell them. So you can introduce liver, explain it, um, and they get used to this really wide variety of tastes, which is incre incredible for their palate and of course, nutritionally as well. So liver and um, red meats that are grass-fed, I'm a big believer in sourcing as high quality as you can. Um, so grass-fed meats, pasture-raised egg yolk is another one. It's really rich in choline and cholesterol. So baby's brain is growing just so rapidly during those early years. So feeding them um, that egg yolk is another great one. Homemade broth, sauerkraut juice. You know, there's some really just amazing superfoods that if we can get them into babies when they're young, we're just setting that lifelong um, road to health. So there's, there's probably, um, you know, some moms in here with some young kids. And, and that was what I was going to ask you is kind of what your go-to foods are. So what, when they're in the, in, in the, in, in the uh, grocery store, you mentioned a few things there, but what are some things right now that they can, they can pick up and start start feeding their children. Absolutely. So I mentioned liver. Um, I love broth. So if you can make it, it really is so simple to make at home. I use an instant pot and I'll just cook a whole chicken and then I'll use the bones and I'll add in some vegetables um, and a little apple cider vinegar, some Celtic sea salt, add water, uh, let it simmer overnight and it's ready in the morning. So broth is a really great one. Sauerkraut, just make sure to get real sauerkraut. It mm. needs to be uh, naturally fermented in the refrigerator and a little bit of sauerkraut juice. I mean, I'm talking even a few drops is a really potent um, probiotic for babies. So I love to include that. That's an easy one you can pick up at the store. And then also including a variety of fats. So this is important, you know, for those younger years, but it continues to be important throughout childhood. So I love to do a variety of fats, you know, coconut oil, grass-fed butter and ghee, avocados, olive oil, tallow, um, organic sweet potatoes. I love to prepare those with one of these healthy fats is a great first food. Um, and really getting in that 
variety for children is really important. Yeah, and that's, that's something, we, you know, with my own son, we discovered is he was willing to eat anything we put in front of him in those early months and the early years. And now he's, he's almost four, so he's getting a little bit more picky about what he eats. But that just stresses the importance of doing that while they're in that stage, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's so normal. I have a four and a half year old too. So it is, I think, really developmentally appropriate to have those preferences and to have those opinions and to be vocal about them. But when they have been introduced early on, um, I think they're more likely to go for them. I always love when I have play dates at my house to serve sardines to kids. And sometimes the parents are like, wait, what are you serving? But this is one of those, <laughs> I call it like a really easy, um, nutrient dense fast food option in the can, you know, wild sardines packed in olive oil and kids love them like I think I am I've had maybe one child ever who hasn't just loved them you can yeah. mix it with mayo if needed but that's a really great one to have on hand and it always is surprising by how much kids enjoy it that's great so those are some things we should gravitate to but what are some things that may be surprisingly toxic that we need to avoid when it comes to our kids that's a great question and I one of the things that I see often even by parents who um, are really big into nutrition is that they are still using plastic food containers. And these are so incredibly toxic. So, you know, bottles, plastic sippy cup, the plastic pouches that food are in, plastic lunchbox and snack containers. So even if we are feeding this really healthy food, when it is packed in plastic, we're exposing them to phthalates, BPA, BPS, um, all of these chemicals that are going right into their food and right into their bodies. There was actually a study in, I think, February out of Denmark, and it was looking at children's toys and eating utensils, and they found that there were over 100 chemicals in plastic mm. materials. So these things are known endocrine disruptors, carcinogens, and kids are often getting exposed on a daily basis. So that's a really easy, um, you know, an easy swap. Thankfully, there's tons of stainless steel options on the market today that you can really easily um, swap out. And then another one that I'm always surprised by is vitamins. And I think a lot of parents think just because it says multivitamin, it says children's vitamin, that it's automatically healthy, when in fact, they are almost always packed with sugar and preservatives. Really looking at the labels, you know, don't assume that because it says vitamin that it's healthy. I, there's a brand called Joy Spring, and they're one of the few that I found that doesn't include sugar in their liquid formulas, and they don't have preservatives or alcohol. So just always flip over the bottle read the label, read the insert, and fully understand what it is that you are going to be giving your child. Awesome. So uh, so a lot of people come to you for a, a variety of things, so whether it be families, whether it be individuals, but how, how do you work to identify some of these imbalances or maybe they're exposed to these toxins? Absolutely. The first thing I do with all of my clients um, is a, a NAC, so a nutritional assessment questionnaire. And this is an in-depth ass assessment of the signs and symptoms that the body is giving. And almost all of these little signs and these little symptoms and these pesky little nuances in our body are signs from our body that some sort of imbalance is going on. So depending on the age of a child, the parents might need to fill this out for them, but it's incredibly thorough. And so we really are going to dive into those particular signs to figure out what imbalances are going on in the body. Um, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, not having an appetite in the morning, skin rashes, behavioral imbalances, all of those are a body communicating something is going on. I also do a food and mood journal. And so this looks at food intake, hydration, sleep, and mood correlations. And this one is important for everybody, but it can be really insightful for children, even just the, the process of going through it and logging moods. And then looking back, parents a lot of times will see an association on their own, which is neat. And from a toxin perspective, I really like to dig into environmental toxin exposure. So EMF exposure, you know, cookware, plastic exposure, the office or school environment that somebody is spending a lot of time in, um, and home health, because all of those can have a big influence on health. Awesome. So let's, uh, I like to in this scenario, some of the guests. So if you have a big megaphone and you can just talk to uh, pretty much anyone in the world and about health, you know, what are some of the top things that you just want to convey to people to really, uh, that they should do to take control of their own health? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, I'm going to say a few. So food-wise, going back to the basics, the more that you can 
get away from anything that is packaged, the better. So sticking with those high quality proteins, you know, your um, pasture raised protein, your pasture raised poultry, your grass fed meats, wild seafood, your organic fruits and vegetables. Um, that is huge. If you are going to do grains, if you tolerate them well, then preparing them properly. So soaking, sprouting, fermenting can be a real, really big aid in actually aiding the digestive process and minimizing anti-nutrients. So going back to the basics with food is important. And then I would also encourage everybody to really listen to their body. So like I said, a lot of those signs and symptoms that we're taught are very common. You know, we're taught that we should just be living with them. That's simply not true. And a lot of times there is an imbalance or there is a nutritional deficiency that can help support your body to alleviate that. And so I would encourage you to listen to your body and find the right care team to alleviate those symptoms. Awesome. Good stuff. Is there anything else that we haven't discussed today that's, that's really you're passionate about that you wanted to uh, share with the audience? You know, so I love how much we've dived into food, and I think it's so important, but I would also say taking a look at your, your home um, and thinking about your life and, and just your exposure within your home is such a big one that we tend to forget about. So taking a look at your EMF exposure, you know, simple things like unplugging the Wi-Fi at night, opening up your windows to let in fresh air, um, having an air purifier, those can be really big influences on home health. So think about your food, but also think about the environment that you're spending every day in. And then one simple thing that I love to tell all of my clients to do is just get morning sun. If you can get outside and you can soak up some sun in the morning, it's really incredible what it can do, um, you know, for overall health, but especially circadian rhythm. So helping you just set that balance so you can get that good deep sleep at night. So get outside, eat good, healthy food and create a healthy home environment. And I think everybody will be set. Yeah, and that's awesome. That's something, especially living in Florida where we live now, uh, is it's such a big difference because uh, you don't even think about it because we we lived up north. We're actually getting an hour more sunlight uh, down here in South. I know you live in a southern state. You live in, you're out of Texas as well, and uh, it just makes a huge difference with your mood and uh, your vitamin production and just getting a healthy vibe. You know, it really helps with that. So that's I'm glad you mentioned that. So my last question for you, Morgan, is how can people connect with you or get in touch with you? You can find me on Instagram at well-timed, like the herb, T-H-Y-M-E-D, uh, or at welltimed.com. And I know I mentioned a couple of resources. So the ones that I did, um, Weston A. Price was the name of the researcher I mentioned. And that book, I always just love to recommend it to anybody. Um, but it's Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. And then the Weston A. Price Foundation is a really great resource for feeding children nutrient-dense food um, and properly sourcing local food. And then the vitamins were Joy Spring vitamins that I mentioned, and those are on Amazon and joyspringvitamins.com. Awesome. Great stuff. Well, thank you for being with us today. I hope the audience enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. We've been talking uh, to Morgan Simon, who is a holistic nutritionist and wellness expert and uh, the founder of Well Timed. And so uh, please look her up for additional information and tips. And again, Morgan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.